Hey everybody, here we are for the movie review I've been wanting to bring to you guys for such a long time now, ever since I heard this movie was coming out this year. And of course, the movie I'm talking about today is The Banshees of Inisherin, directed by Martin McDonough, starring Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson, Cary Condon, and Barry Keegan. Now, first off, I have to say, for those of you who don't know, uh, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri was one of my absolute favorite movies from 2017. I think that movie's a masterpiece. Uh, it's a 10 out of 10 film for me, and it was it's still in my top 100 films of all time. So I really not only just love that film, but I also love In Bruges. I, I think In Bruges is one of the uh, most profane, one of the most clever, one of the most hysterical films I've ever seen in my life, but you know, brilliant nonetheless. And so of course, Martin McDonough, I haven't seen um, Seven Psychopaths yet, but Martin McDonough seems to never miss. Like, this guy, just when he makes a movie, he takes his time with it. Uh, because, granted, you see how these movies have been spaced out, the, the years between them. And so it makes sense that he would be paying very, very much attention to the detail he's putting into the script. Because... Obviously, Martin McDonough is one hell of a screenwriter. I think anybody can tell you that. Just listen to his dialogue in his films. And, of course, The Banshees of Innes Sharon is no exception. Some of the wittiest, some of the most cleverest dialogue I've heard all year. And, yet again, some of the most hysterical. I don't think there's as many laugh-out-loud moments as there was in In Bruges or um, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. But I think that... You know, it may, it maybe it's because the Irish accents are so, so thick, and I couldn't have subtitles, so I couldn't necessarily throw it on and, and get 100% of the time what they're saying. But just the small characters' interaction, where, like, let's say, for example, there's these two characters, right? And one says something, and then the other one repeats them. It, it's just stuff like that. It adds a lot of um, character to the universe, and I think all these characters have very distinct ways of delivering uh, their dialogue. And s since we're talking about the dialogue, let's talk about the actors who delivered it. Of course, I think we have to mention right off the top, Colin Farrell, uh, one of his absolute best performances. And, and really, he's the one you follow throughout the entire movie. It really is his story. What Colin Farrell does that impresses me so much is what he does with his eyes. It's just incredible. You feel the heartbreak. You feel the pain. You feel the betrayal in his eyes. Because the story is about uh, him and... Uh, Brendan Gleeson's character, who are the best of friends, and Brendan Gleeson's character one day just decides, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. And he, it's driving this guy crazy, because he wants to know what it is, but, uh, you know, he's not telling him, and then he's, like, making an ultimatum that it's like, if you keep talking to me, I'm going to cut my fingers off, because he plays the violin. And now that's in the trailer, so I don't mind uh, spoiling that, quote-unquote. Um... But Colin Farrell, you just see him process, his character process this throughout the entire film. And just the way he reacts to situations, it's so subtle. It's just so uh, effective. I, I, I really think that this is definitely going to get Colin Farrell his first Oscar nomination, which is hard to believe because you'd expect by now Colin Farrell would have an Oscar nomination under his belt, right? I mean, he's just one of the most terrific actors out there. And, of course, that goes for Brendan Gleeson as well. Now, I don't think... His performance is is much in the forefront. He really is the driving force behind this narrative and kind of sets the ball rolling, if you will. And I think he too will probably get his first Oscar nomination, which is crazy to think. After a veteran like Brendan Gleeson hasn't had one yet, uh, he's been around such a long time, and now his son is even in the business. So I, I think that this is a performance that it it isn't really necessarily a showy performance at all. It, yet again, I think he's even more subtle uh, than Colin Farrell because I think Farrell has some more outward uh, emotions that he puts forth on the screen, but um, a lot of Brendan Gleeson's uh, acting is more in internalized, even more so. And uh, I think he's really great in it. But honestly, I think another standout is Carrie Condon. Uh, I haven't really seen her in anything. I know she was in the Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, but... Man, she steals every scene she's in, and really, I feel like in some way is, is is the anchor of this film, the heart and soul, if you will, kind of in the same way that Ki Hui Kwan is the heart and soul of Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think she really is the one who plays the most pivotal role in the story and what her character represents to where they are on this island, and um, just she has her own arc uh, within itself, so... 
really love the work she does. She can be fierce, she can be sassy when she needs to, but she's also so attentive and, 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 and just so caring. Uh, I, I just think it's a very dynamic performance, and I absolutely loved her in this movie. I absolutely think she deserves to be nominated for Best Supporting Actress, and I think maybe out of what I've seen, uh, the front runner, honestly, I think she's absolutely terrific in this film. And then there's Barry Keegan, who I tell you, Every single time he's in a movie, he continues to impress, and this is no exception. His comedic timing is absolutely indelible. Uh, the way he reacts to situation, he's kind of like the oddball in, in the village. I mean, they're all kind of oddballs, but him especially, and you know, he's kind of made a, a hallmark for playing those types of characters. But really, I think that this is one of his absolute best performances. Not only can he be absolutely revolting one minute, but there's one scene near the end of the film where it's like, because you understand that he's not the most socially apt uh, individual in this place, but there's one scene near the end of this film that is just absolutely heartbreaking, and, and I just think the, the amount of depth and subtlety that uh, Keegan brings to it is just absolutely incredible and shows why he has been rising uh, in, in the movie industry because he really is a terrific actor uh, to have in, in any project. And I hope, you know, maybe he could even get nominated for this. I think it's a little bit more of a long shot. I think they're definitely positioning Gleason to be the one to get into the supporting actor category. But, hey, I mean, it happened with three billboards. We had Sam Rockwell and Woody Harrelson. Now, obviously, Sam Rockwell uh, went on to win for his absolute phenomenal performance in that film but I absolutely think that that could be another case but regardless I, I absolutely loved him in this movie but that's the thing about the Banshees of Sharon is really all these characters have a very very specific purpose as to why they are here in this film and what they stand for for the themes because they're all stuck on this island it takes place in 1920s Ireland you know amidst a civil war and they're all kind of stuck there, you know, they can't really do much. All Colin Farrell's character lives for is going to the pub every day, seeing his friend, and, uh, you know, Brendan Gleeson's character, he wants to, you know, make, he wants to do music. He, he really wants to leave an indelible impact on society, and, and I just love the, the dynamic, because you don't, I, I think the one thing about this movie that I will say, I feel like the way Brendan Gleeson's character goes about doing things, um, based on why he doesn't want to talk to um, Colin Farrell's character, I think is a little far-fetched. And But maybe we aren't supposed to understand it. I don't know. Perhaps that's the point. But I think, regardless, the points he makes as to why he doesn't want to talk to his character are really, really compelling and very, very thought-provoking. There's one line that he says to Carrie Condon in the movie... Uh, that really, really, and you'll know what moment I'm talking about, it's just between the two of them, that really stood out to me and stuck with me. I, I don't want to spoil it just because, you know, uh, some people haven't seen it, but it really, it, yet again, it's there's so much subtext in this dialogue, as sometimes abrasive and, and hysterical as it is, there's a lot underneath the surface that's not being said, and that these actors just pull off terrifically. Uh, and I think just the, the thematic depth on display is, is certainly felt. Uh, you know, I think it's one of those things, too, where it's like this movie, I will say, it takes a little while to, to get to where it's going. Not that it's ever slow, but I think maybe the, the uh, limited location kind of prevents me from enjoying it as much as I would have hoped. Uh, I just don't think it moves around as uh, much as I want it to. And also, I don't think it has any incredible moments, like in, or at least incredible moments, like in Three Billboard, where, you know, uh, it gets some throwing somebody out a window, you know, and not, nothing like that, but on the same token, I think that there's so much going on here that they are building towards for the end of, of this narrative. And just how you can see these people wanting to live meaningful lives, either that just means, you know, going to your day by day and, and just enjoying uh, and surrounding yourself with loved ones or trying to leave something impactful. And this is, honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably could have watched this movie at a better time in my life. Uh, it really does resonate with me on so many levels once I actually sat down and thought about it. And, and I think the way these characters kind of interact and what they mean uh, to the th themes, they, they all approach it from a different angle. Uh, at least McDonough does in you know executing uh, these characters' story arcs. And I think the story arcs themselves, especially Colin Farrell's and Brendan Gleeson's, really 
drive the point home and and just to, to see where they end up it really is a full fleshed arc you see the characters change or at least for sure um well i won't say too much but uh you definitely see exactly what he's hitting at when it comes to to loneliness and and and, and the epitome of loneliness and, and and what that means how how to live a meaningful life is it is there anything we can do to uh make uh this meaningful out of what we have and um so many themes that uh, are just beyond thought-provoking, and uh, yeah, I really think that this is one of the best movies of the year. Uh, straight up, uh, could make my top ten even, I, I think, yet again, I mean, it's Martin McDonough, so nobody should really be surprised. But uh, it's definitely getting nominated for screenplay, might even win the screenplay, definitely getting nominated for picture, maybe director, uh, definitely best actor, supporting actor. Uh, supporting actress. There's so many categories to fall into, and also I have to uh, compliment. I believe his name is uh, uh, Ben Davis. Yes, Ben Davis's cinematography in this film is absolutely breathtaking. You get these beautiful vistas of the the Irish coastland, and definitely it, it's not even just about the visuals of the setting itself, because the setting really is a character, but. There's certain shots that I think perfectly display what is going on in the film. And also just the, all the other characters that populate the world and the small character actions which are so idiosyncratic of Martin McDonough. Like when uh, Brendan Gleeson's character, he goes to the priest and it's you'd expect it to be a very, very reverent sort of meeting you know, between a, a holy man, so-called, but it's just one of the most profane interactions in the entire movie. But even within that, there's still some sort of uh, profound uh, meaning coming out of these conversations that really drive the narrative and the characters forward. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love this movie, and I think on that note, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I don't like it more uh, than In Bruges, I don't like it more than Three Billboards, but I certainly think that uh, this man has not missed yet. I, I just think one of the best directors and screenwriters working today is evident from this film, and i just so glad to see uh, Brendan Gleeson and uh, Colin Farrell back on the screen again. Uh, what a dynamic duo, and, and uh, what a brilliant work they put on display here. So yeah guys, have you seen the Banshees of Inna Sharon? Really, I mean, you gotta check this one out as soon as you can. Uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed, especially if you're in for some black comedy. Uh, this has it up to the wazoo. So yeah guys, let me know what you think about that. And of course, if you like what I'm doing here, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. Going to be so many more movie reviews now that we're in the thick of Oscar season and we're talking about these Oscar contenders. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to find more and uh, talk about them with you. And of course, I gotta tell you, tomorrow's the day. The top 90 albums of the 90s. Yes, sir. First episode debuting on this channel. The fourth collaboration between Nathaniel A. Hart and Johnny Radio. It's going to be here. So please, you're not going to want to miss out on that. And in the meantime, thank you for watching this video. And I will see you guys later.